so welcome everybody. Um, I don't know, I think we have some new students from this, this year, uh, this time. Thank you so much for joining us. This is the third meeting we have. And thank you, Costis, so much for, for your time, for being here with us. Thank you for your work, which is stunning. We have so much work to share today, even if uh, Costis can show some of his current work, of course, uh, because it's confidential, but we have just so much stuff to look at. And so Costis is a storyboard artist, now working as a storyboard revisionist at Brown Bag Films. And first of all, I, I'd love to ask, um, what is your, your job like? What does a storyboard revisionist and what are the main differences uh, with storyboard artists between me and two of them? Great. I mean, that's, uh, first of all, it's a great question because I've been in uh, panels before with uh, storyboard artists, uh, like 30 plus years in the industry, and they are asked if, uh, what is a storyboard artist? And I, I've seen people like actually struggling to say, uh, what does a storyboard artist do exactly? Uh, but I suppose that explaining the storyboard artist and the storyboard revisionist in a way uh, is something that I can do right now, <laughs> even though I don't have the 35 year experience. Um, so basically what a storyboard artist does is that uh, you get uh, a script. You're probably the first person that uh, starts visualizing someone else's idea. So I'm pretty sure that the students of uh, Idea Academy are pretty familiar with uh, storyboarding. Um, the difference between a storyboard artist and a storyboard revisionist is, uh, I would say, immense, maybe, because you're working in a different department entirely, at least uh, from my experience. Um, so a storyboard revisionist is kind of in the middle of uh, the storyboarding phase and the production phase. So basically the production has already started when the storyboard revisionist is involved. And um, we, what we do is that we receive uh, storyboards. We have been... We, that have been approved uh, already. They, ha they have been turned into animatics. And that also, of course, takes a process. We can talk about that as well, how uh, the, pro the process about creating a storyboard. Um, but after that part, when the storyboard artist's uh, work has been uh, concluded, the revisionist team takes over. And what we do basically is that we follow uh, the director's notes and uh, we make uh, changes, we make corrections uh, on those. Uh, not corrections, but we like, um, try to make these storyboards serve the production needs uh, more. And what happens in, in my job, because I mean, I'm not allowed to talk about the production, unfortunately, uh, but I can say that uh, there are in, in productions like that, there are um, studios involved, production houses involved, um, the networks that are gonna show the, the final results. So there is a process of going back and forth uh, with the storyboard and the revisions and every one of those uh, people and departments involved uh, has always notes to give. Um, so what's happening is that we have passes on the storyboard. It goes from the director back to us. We make our uh, changes on it. We send it back. It comes back. It's a process that doesn't end in one <laughs> in one go. Um, it keeps coming back. And uh, in my work right now, we have uh, at least five or six revision phases until the final product is reached and uh, the quality is locked. So it's, uh, it's a really, really interesting process. It feels like you are um, serving the story in a way that, I mean, as a storyboard artist, you have this thing that you have to understand that you're not going to see the final, uh, you're not going to see your work on the screen, unfortunately, but uh, you know that probably without you being this uh, middle part, uh, the final product will not uh, reach the audience. And that for me is very fulfilling to know that we're serving this purpose. No, I think it's amazing because also you have this uh, chance to work closely with the director mm -hmm. and I think may maybe many storyboard artists then aim for their career to to reach the director level I don't know if it's something you are thinking about or or not well, I mean I, I have to say that uh, working as a storyboard artist because you have to understand directing so um, I would assume that it's uh, it makes sense I mean it's a logical uh, path towards directing because you have to understand uh, sometimes what the director wants before the director tells you if you want to be fast in your work because uh, storyboarding is uh, one of those jobs that you can't uh, <laughs> it's it's one of those uh, stressing uh, positions that you have to work really fast so yes. you, you need I mean we can also talk about that and answer some questions that I had as well uh, about how fast we should be moving etc 
Um, but understanding the directing of a series of a show that you're working on is very important. So lots of people are uh, aiming towards that. And uh, for me, I mean, right now, I I don't want to say if I'm aiming for uh, being a day director. I really like, I really love directing. Um, but I can pretty much uh, serve this purpose through my storyboard. So uh, as I said, it's the different thing about being a director and a storyboard artist is that uh, being a storyboard artist, you have to kind of get into the director's mind and visualize what the director wants to say. So this is basically the difference. No, it's it's really amazing. But now we really want to know how you how you reached this level, how you understood you wanted to become a storyboard artist. So I think you started studying something really different at oh, university. Yeah. <laughs> so we yes, just tell us everything. What okay. what what happened? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, eventually a lot of good things happened, and that's why uh, I'm here. But uh, I would say that uh, my story is like one of those stories that in a very poetic way to not abandon your dreams and just keep going for them. And if you have something uh, in your mind, you can always reach it, no matter what your age is, no matter what uh, your position is or whatever. So what I did is that, uh, I mean, I come from Greece and, uh, well, unfortunately, the animation community in Greece is not as widespread as I would like it to be. Uh, because when I was 17 years old, what we did is uh, 17, 18 years old, we have our national exams. We get into university and by that time I had no uh, formal training on art so I chose chemistry um, <laughs> which uh, I mean looking back now is uh, completely unrelated to what I wanted to do but uh, I realized that by studying it um, and they figured out that you know chemistry is like a science is a science and I couldn't be contained in, in the borders of a chemistry laboratory so I started uh, practicing my way uh, into art. I studied in uh, comic and uh, figure drawing, figure sculpting and illustration course um, here in my city, which I did uh, uh, along with my studies in chemistry. And then after I graduated from uh, the university, I got my bachelor's degree in chemistry. I finally realized that, you know, this is this is what I want to do. I don't want to. Um, I mean, of course, no disrespect for those people that are still uh, working as chemists, I absolutely admire their courage and <laughs> their work, but it just it wasn't for me. I learned crucial things from it, but it was time uh, to move on. And uh, by that time, I had all, I had completed two years of uh, comic drawing and illustration course, so it was time for me to come to Idea, and that was the the big step in my career, where it was probably like a leap of faith. I trusted myself. I joined the I enrolled in the master's uh, visual development master's course, uh, level one. And uh, it was basically, I would say, uh, my first and probably the only uh, formal art training that I received. Um, so coming to Rome, joining the academy, it was for me a revelation, honestly. I, apart from the fact that I ended up learning so many things, I met with people who completely changed my mind and they made me understand that it is possible to achieve a career in animation and it is possible despite what um, I have been uh, hearing from my peers here in Greece that it's not a life sustaining solution. It's not something that you can do. Uh, being an artist is not something that you can uh, live with. You can have a career and whatever. Um, so basically coming to idea is what changed my mind about that. And I understand that uh, you can do it <laughs> by um, making all these uh, steps, which for me were more like huge jumps from one place to the other, because as I said, I didn't have uh, formal art training. Um, so I put my heart and soul into that one year and I managed to completely transform my portfolio from when I enrolled into the academy to uh, after I graduated. And uh, I went to the Festival of Annecy, which again, it was one uh, huge, huge uh, leap forward uh, to understand how this uh, community works. And I think we can talk hours about how great the animation community is. Um, but uh, let's just give it, uh, leave it to that, that it's a very supportive community. And uh, I understood that by talking to some people and figuring out that uh, what storyboarding is basically, because I have to say that when I joined the academy, I honestly didn't know what storyboarding was. Um, I, I was doing storyboarding for comics and um, 
when I when I entered the academy, I had the great teacher Davide De Cubelis, who told me that who told us what it is actually what storyboarding is, and I learned lots from that. Um, and I understood that this was what I wanted to do because it combines uh, the drawing of characters, drawing of backgrounds, and all in this uh, compositional way that makes uh, visual storytelling basically uh, happen possible. And uh, so after this one year of uh, Idea Academy, I had a job offer. I was lucky enough to receive a job offer um, to work as a storyboard artist in a studio in Cyprus that is called uh, ZM Media Animations, uh, where it was my, f oh, I have to apologize because I have a, I have a dog here. <laughs> I have <laughs> a dog be, as well, don't worry. <laughs> might, might be disturbing the call a little bit because uh, he, he's feeling lonely at the moment. Apologies <laughs> about that. If you can't hear me or if you want to stop me at any moment, just let me know. No, 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 no. I have a dog as well. And maybe, I don't know, maybe they will meet. Uh, oh, wonderful. The <laughs> yes. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, yeah, so I was saying that I joined uh, this animation studio in Cyprus and it was uh, my first uh, job as a, as a storyboard artist, as an artist in general. Um, I would even consider it my first job in general. <laughs> Because here, I mean, I was working as a, at a bar while I was uh, uh, studying and stuff like that. And um, in the end, it gave me so many things. I became part of uh, a real production team for the first time. Uh, I learned what it means to be part of a studio. I was lucky enough that this happened pre-coronavirus. Um, yeah. So <laughs> I know that it's unfortunate, but we're going to talk about that as well. I'm going to say my experience, uh, talk about my experience during the pandemic, which is also pretty interesting. Um, so after one year of uh, working in ZDEM Media, I decided that I wanted to um, enhance my knowledge of storyboarding. I joined a three-month course in uh, Denmark in the animation workshop. Yeah. It, um, the course is, uh, is called Storyboarding Professional Training. And as I said, it was uh, three months of uh, studying intensely about storyboarding specifically and uh, I mean, what you're seeing right now from the presentation is uh, part of my portfolio after I graduated from that course. And this happened, this was actually last year, so uh, it was beginning of the quarantine. And after that, it was a time when uh, I realized that with uh, my portfolio, with my better work, I can apply for uh, storyboarding positions again. And uh, to be honest, professionally, I mean, career wise, the quarantine for me <laughs> has been the best year so far. Um, and this is, it, it has an explanation. It's not uh, just for me. It's that uh, while actual productions weren't happening, animation could still happen. Studios starting yes. working remotely. Um, we figured out that it's possible to work remotely because, I mean, I'm not denying that the fact to be in the same room with other people, to be in a studio with other people, um, better artists uh, than you makes you better. Uh, but it's possible to work from home. And so lots of production started happening. Um, there were lots of shows being announced for um, streaming, streaming sites and networks. And so I started working as a storyboard artist for uh, animated TV series, which is what I'm doing right now as well. And now I'm working as a revisionist, but uh, previously I was working as a storyboard artist for two uh, TV series. One of which I can say, actually, which is uh, it, because the series is out, it's going to be okay. just my episodes are not out yet, um, but maybe we'll see soon. Uh, the series is called Kaiko and Kokos. It's a series on Netflix. It's, uh, uh, it's created, produced by a Polish animation studio called uh, GS Animation. And that was a great, 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 great experience for me. After that, I worked for another TV series, which unfortunately I can't say anything or <laughs> I'll have to be silent forever. Um, and after that, uh, while I was thinking that uh, I need some rest, I need to have a long, relaxing summer, I got this amazing once in a lifetime, until now, opportunity to work for Brown Bug as a revisionist. <laughs> and uh, it was an offer I couldn't <laughs> decline. So I joined Brown Bug in um, beginning of September, no, beginning of August this year and uh, we're still going strong. We're in production and uh, hopefully we'll get to see some wonderful stuff soon from Brown Bug. Oh yes, yes. I, I can't wait. So you're, you're working for a TV series now for Brown Bag as well. I, I right? believe 
that's as much as I can say right now. Okay, okay, okay. no, 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 we not no, gonna. Good. I'm yes, good. but uh, yeah, yeah, I'm working for an animated TV series, and uh, well, Brown Bag is a studio that uh, mostly works with uh, TV series, and uh, I believe that it's it's 3D animated TV series mainly. I mean, you can check from that from the website. Uh, wonderful, wonderful work, and I'm super excited to be part of this team. Yes, congratulations, since it's Thanks. something really, yeah, uh, a recent achievement, but. Yes. Yeah, but it's really great. I, I'm really curious, though, um, because you started at the Academy not knowing what Storyboard was. Yep. Um, and I think it's something that happens quite often because mm -hmm. people just choose it at the Academy maybe for this, the design um, course. Right. And then you discovered Storyboard, which is something I, I think happened for a lot of students. We have amazing teachers for for Storyboard. You had Davide, now right. we have uh, Flaviano. Uh, it was a big revelation for me as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I think it's a very important course. I mean, I also had Flaviano for a very short time. Um, I fortunately didn't have many lessons with him. Uh, and uh, I have to say that except for uh, people who want to go into storyboarding, I think it's a very uh, important course that sometimes people um, just forget or maybe not paying attention because they want to go into character design and stuff like that. And I think it teaches you so much, even if you don't want to go into storyboarding. Because, um, as I said, storyboarding is a field that combines all of the designing, mo most of the designing elements, I would say, um, of other visual development departments. But in the same time, at the same time, you have to do them super fast. Um, so it's a great way to practice your mind and then create some, you know, of this necessary muscle memory that you will need uh, in other fields of visual development as well. Um, so, yeah, as much as I, I'm not recommending uh, for people to uh, do what I did to join uh, an, a school without knowing what storyboarding is um, because I mean knowing what it is I absolutely loved it so uh, people should, <laughs> should know what it is I'm joking of course but uh, apart from that it was a uh, great great course and as I said I started from ground zero and it ended up with me uh, actually getting a job within one year so that was yeah and this is yeah. really a big, big achievement. But um, so you were studying also comics while mm -hmm. going to university. Do mm -hmm. you think that played a part in you choosing storyboard as a career after? Maybe. Well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> as much as uh, I want, and as much as I'm thinking that uh, storyboarding is, I mean, if, if you look at it, if you look at the storyboard, you can say that it's a much more detailed comic book. I mean, this is something yes. this is an explanation that i'm using when i'm explaining uh what i'm doing basically to like my grandparents or someone who uh doesn't know and is not willing to know what it is um so it it is pretty similar i mean it's it's again i'm saying it's part of this um visual storytelling uh department and so i would say that the comics are still a big inspiration uh in my career so probably it played a big role um, I mean, I initially wanted to become a comic book artist, so and I, I worked a little bit uh, for some editorials uh, here locally, um, but then I figured out that there is animation out there and I fell in love with it, so I moved on from that. Oh, no, no, I totally get you because I did comic school before I did academy as well. And it was a bit of the same thinking process, I think. And also many artists from comic school then go into storyboard, also many, many famous artists working mainly mm -hmm. for Disney and Pixar. So, right, right, yes, right. there is a and common language at mm -hmm, some point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's true. And it's, uh, I mean, I've heard from people, I try to do it uh, as well myself, that uh, if you want to uh, go into storyboard, a great way of uh, practicing your skills is starting maybe a personal comic, like a webzine, a web comic or something. You can do that even for fun. Um, if you're out of ideas and you don't have a clear scenario that you can storyboard, um, you can just start with uh, drawing panels for comics, and then maybe from that you can develop something uh, that is more animated. Uh, so it's a cool exercise if you want to do that as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. This is a cool tip. Mm -hmm. So I, I was thinking about these um, uh, panels that I'm showing now. So you mm -hmm. said this is uh, from the uh, workshop you took at uh, the, the animation workshop. Right. Uh, so I, I thought this was uh, from ID Academy. But maybe you had other storyboards that you used to apply because I'm really curious. Yeah. How how did you find your first job? Okay. 
Um, so, I mean, I should maybe have shown some of these storyboards that I used when I got my first job, but... Uh, okay, maybe we can I, show <laughs> them later. Yeah, maybe, don't, maybe don't worry. I, I, can, I can share my screen at some point, but... Uh, yeah, basically what I did is that uh, I have now you are looking at the, these panels from a story that I've been developing in my mind for years and it's uh, I'm using the same characters when I have to uh, come up with a story on in a second. I'm just using I'm using the same characters and I keep developing the story. Uh, maybe at some point it's going to become something more than that. Uh, who knows? <laughs> yes, we, we right? hope for that. <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see. But now it's like it's my go to story whenever I I want to storyboard something fast. And this uh, actually started as an exercise, but then became a, a personal piece uh, for my portfolio. So it's not, it didn't come from the animation workshop. It's something that uh, I developed while being there. Okay. And, uh, yeah, so I can say that the storyboards that I used in my first uh, version of the portfolio when I got my uh, first job, I would say that in quality, they weren't, I mean, I'm not ashamed of them <laughs> by any means, and I'm not uh, in quality, they are pretty similar. Um, but uh, I, I had things that I needed to learn from working experience, such as compositions, uh, posing, character acting, which is very important. Um, so you can, you, you can, you will see. Maybe I can show some stuff later. Um, but uh, the most important thing, the difference between my first portfolio and this one, was the quantity. Uh, okay. In the first first portfolio, I had uh, probably. Three storyboards, which I did for uh, ID Academy, which consisted of, I don't know, maybe two, three pages each. So that's not really, really long if you want to go for storyboarding specifically. Um, plus, I had my, my portfolio was uh, now, which was all together. So you had storyboards and character designs, okay. and backgrounds and everything on the same page, probably, uh, which was something that I changed later on. Um, so I think this was kind of my the difference between my first portfolio and this one. And uh, as I said, now the difference in quantities. Now I have at least five, six projects uh, with uh, much more pages so people can uh, have a look and see uh, what you're developing, right? You're talking about a story. And uh, this is my personal story, but still through those panels you can see a uh, character arc, a story arc, and all of these things. I, I, I think pretty clear. Um, yeah. No, definitely. I I enjoyed watching at them <laughs> while I was preparing this presentation. Um, so um, you found your first job um, through Annecy, or or maybe not. It was just right. maybe applying to st mm -hmm. studios yeah, after I. It, it it wasn't it wasn't through Annecy. Um, although I said in Annecy, it was the first experience I had with actual job uh, seeking in the animation industry. Uh, where I did interviews for studios and stuff. Um, so after it, during the summer, I actually started looking into studios' uh, websites and uh, career sites such as LinkedIn and ArtStation and stuff. And I found out this studio was hiring, and they were asking for a storyboard artist. Uh, the description, the requirements matched uh, my experience by that time. So I had an interview, found it pretty pretty cool. The everything was really nice. The people were really nice. I was accepted. Uh, I was hired basically, so I just I, I got there like that. So it was it wasn't through Annecy. That's the answer to the question. Okay. Um, yeah, it was through job uh, job seeking in the I would say more traditional way. I don't know. Uh, I mean, we're not looking into newspapers right now, but we're looking into websites and uh, job platforms, etc. No, but it's great. You, you, yeah, you sure did a great research on your own, and that paid off. Yeah, yeah, and I, I'm not saying sorry. It, I'm not saying that it's uh, it's an easy process, right? I mean, no, moment. no, of course not. Yeah. Um, but let's just get this out <laughs> to the to everyone that it's not really easy at the moment for everyone to like go out and just find a job. I'm not saying that, but uh, it's possible, especially in the animation industry right now. Fortunately. Uh, with lots of productions happening and uh, if you start looking for a job through those platforms that I said and you have uh, people in your network the thing that we're talking about lots of times the networking part um, as I said we are I want to believe that we are all really supportive with each other so you're going to hear from people yes. back and uh, it's it's doable you can do it <laughs>
Yes, we should always remember these two. Yeah, right. keep supporting each other. Right, I think it's very important. And uh, I mean, if I can say that I am really, I'm still impressed. I mean, I'm not in the industry for a very long time. I'm right now in my third year working as a storyboard artist. And I can say that it's, I'm still getting impressed with the people that I meet and uh, the community that the animation world has built. Um, all the creatives and they started for me in idea and it keeps going and I still keep meeting people that are, uh, you know, they have all their cards open and they're not going to try to hide something from you. They're not going to try to, uh, you know, backstab you or anything. They are uh, all the time looking forward for younger artists. And I think that's very important in what we do because uh, it's, it's how we get better, right? In our job, we get better by looking to other people, looking up to other people and maybe sometimes copying what they do. Um, so if, if someone not copying in the way of copying their art and saying copying their uh, creative process. So if someone comes to you and tells you what you can do, is, I think it's a really, really great, uh, great way of developing this community. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's important to remember to always be thankful and at some point give back. Absolutely, yeah. This is, yeah, this is really great. And so I was thinking, so you said you started working before the pandemic, so you had this on-site experience and right. then we we know COVID came and now you're working completely remotely? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, I'm so Okay, so you're in Greece? Yes, right now I'm in Greece. I'm in Greece working for Ireland, you know, it was uh, <laughs> for a study in Ireland is one of those things that uh, I couldn't imagine myself being in a situation like that, but uh, it happened and uh, gladly we were kind of not I wouldn't say prepared for it but uh, we uh, as a, as a field as a professional field we got into it pretty quickly and figured out what was needed there to be done yeah of course and uh, what do you think are the main differences between working remotely or being on site we, we said something before but yeah. you have this first-hand experience <laughs> right uh, well, as I said before, I mean, if I could choose, if I wanted to be in a studio, if I wanted to work from home, um, I would choose to work at a studio because um, it's the way that you keep getting better, right? You're sitting next to someone, this this someone is uh, much better than you, you learn from them, you meet with different artists, different styles, uh, plus, I mean, being in the in the place where the production happens, when the, where the magic happens, is uh, it's, it's, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful experience being in the studio. Um, the difference is that, well, you're in a different environment. You're, I wouldn't say you're disconnected from your uh, peers, from your colleagues, um, because we have found ways with meetings and uh, uh, sessions like this one to uh, not just interact with each other, but also educate each other. I mean, you, you know as well, like apart from that, that also festivals are happening, Annecy is happening online and stuff like that. So um, it's not as bad as it would sound pre-pandemic that you're going to be working from home for two years in a row. Um, but I'm definitely looking forward to the studios reopening and so that we can uh, join the production houses immediately. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you never got the chance to meet any of your colleagues right now? Unfortunately, only through video calls. <laughs> yeah, so far. But hopefully in the future, fingers crossed. No, yeah, of course, of course. Um, we just have to be patient, maybe a little bit more. Um, but there are also great opportunities, as you said, working remotely maybe can help us, I don't know, find right. jobs really far away. Right, right, right. And uh, I can say that, I, I can't say the name of the production, but uh, I can say that this unnamed series that I was talking on, talking about before, uh, happened with a team, with a studio that was very far away, I can say. <laughs> and it was, uh, I wouldn't be able to reach uh, out to them if they were asking for people uh, working in-house at that time. So in that sense, I would say that the pandemic gave uh, some opportunities back to the people. It was uh, like our reward for being patient for two years. Um, so yeah, lots of uh, production houses, lots of studios from like uh, the USA or Canada are hiring international workers right now. Yeah. Uh, and this is something that 
was a bit harder to happen pre-pandemic if they wanted you to relocate. We know that there is a bit of a yes. strange situation with the visas, etc. Um, so it gave us some more opportunities in that sense. Hey yes. guys, if I can uh, just jump in for a sec. Hey guys, how's it uh, going? Hello. I caused this. Good to, good to see um, you. We are having actually another partnership with um, uh, another studio in, uh, in New York, and they're coming over. Uh, they're interested in our alumni and our graduated students, and uh, they will do a presentation for people that are currently in school. Uh, but they are interested in alumni because they're, they have a really serious internship program, paid internship program, and oh, nice. uh, a uh, four month commitment. And um, you really cannot go to school and uh, and do this uh, um, internship. And so that's why they are very much um, very much um, interested in people that graduated uh, to start with. And then just work with us and keep an eye on people that uh, that haven't graduated yet that are going to be going to school with us. It's called Hornet uh, Animation, and it's in New York City. And they do a lot of shorts, a lot of um, short-term projects, and they do really artsy stuff. That's why I uh, that's why I thought it would be a really great match with so many of you, and I'm seeing your work as well, Costas, and people like that. I mean, you're already beyond internships, but yeah. I'm sure there will be a lot of people that will be interested in it. So they're going to give a presentation, and uh, we will. Um, Kind of talk to them about uh, helping some of you get internship there, and that's just the beginning. We're going to I send letters to many companies, and little by little, we're getting some interest going, so that we can become more of a uh, little bit of an employment agency as well, helping your agents, you know, helping you get uh, jobs or internships as well as uh, getting training with us. So I just wanted to mention that, and uh, I'll just uh, leave. I love that how the conversation is going. Thank you, Rachel, so much for being so. So good at this. Wow. Okay. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel flattered. No, this is exciting news. I didn't know about this. Wonderful. And Wonderful. Sounds, yeah. Sounds great. Yeah, this is so great. There, there is so much going on. I mean, idea is growing so fast in the years. Definitely. Definitely. And uh, I mean, the fact that uh, we are doing this thing where uh, I mean, now I'm, I'm seeing talks with pros, and I never felt of, I never saw myself as a pro at the moment. But I mean, yeah, but as, you much, are. As, as much experience as you have right now, I would say that if you have things to share with other people, and if you have things to share with uh, the alum, alumni community and with people who want to attend the school, maybe in the future, I think it's really important that these talks are happening and that our community is keeping strong. I mean, I, I have three years maybe after I graduated from IDEA and I still feel it at a home. I mean, I would I would love to come to go back and see the school even and like say hi to the staff and everything. So I think it's really, really great what uh, the school is doing at the moment and helping everyone on their way, even after the school. Yes, <laughs> it would be great to have a, a meeting maybe um, on site after COVID, of course. I and hope for that. How I wish. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we're talking about some inspirational stuff. And w would you say you have some artists or maybe movies or comic books or whatever form of art that inspired you? Maybe when you were a kid or maybe when you were a student, an art student. Maybe you want to share them with us? Of course, for sure. I mean, it's uh, I would say that it's different the thing that inspired me maybe when I was a kid. Not that it stopped inspiring me, but uh, I'm feeling this inspiration as an uh, ever evolving thing. So I might get inspired by different things every single day. <laughs> I'm one of those people that see something and if they like it, they just, you know, I have antennas on and I just I'm focused on that and I want to learn more. Um, so as a kid, I mean, uh, as lots of people, I would say, Disney movies and um, the late 90s Cartoon Network shows um, and Pokemon. Pokemon was one of those. <laughs> Pokemon was one of those big revelations for me, and it still inspires me in a way. I mean, uh, in creator design, <laughs> in the, 
not oh, uh, yes. necessarily not necessarily in storytelling, but it's uh, one of those things that still inspire me. I still play the game, um, of course. And uh, but that evolved from from that. Like for a while, I wasn't so much into uh, getting visual inspiration, um, but getting more, uh, let's say. Uh, mental inspiration, I don't know how to say it, maybe my English is not really good for that, if someone can help me with the word. So I was reading, I was reading lots of books and I got uh, lots of inspirations growing, back, growing up from, uh, from those. I was a huge, huge nerd for Tolkien, I was reading Lovecraft, Stephen King, uh, all of those um, fantasy uh, elements in storytelling, which, uh, I mean, in my mind, they were like, as if they were visual at the moment. Uh, I mean, for me, when I still, when I read Tolkien, when I'm rereading uh, the books, I just feel like I'm seeing this world uh, in front of me. So this was really, really wonderful uh, growing up. Then um, I started watching actually movies, live action movies. And uh, since I am a very, very big fan of uh, goofy comedy, another show that I was watching. As a kid, was uh, the Looney Tunes. I, I absolutely loved the Coyote and Road Runner and all these uh, very silly gags of them falling and falling from bridges and bumping onto each other. Tom and Jerry and all of these kind of shows. Uh, elements of that I found in uh, uh, live action movies as well. I am a huge, huge fan of Edgar Wright. Uh, I think that uh, Edgar Wright is a genius. An absolute genius on how to do visual comedy at the moment and whoever hasn't watched Scott Pilgrim vs the world should watch it right now and then we can have a whole discussion about it in the comment section <laughs> or in uh, uh, on Instagram or wherever you want um, brilliant brilliant movie there is actually a YouTube video that, uh, that you can you can watch which is uh, I believe it's called how Edgar Wright does visual comedy or something like that visual comedy with Edgar Wright uh, brilliant, brilliant. Um, I am enjoying modern directors, I would say. I have a very big passion for, uh, I, f I can never pronounce his name, I think it's pronounced Noah Bombach and Greta Gerwig. Uh, I'm not really sure how to say it, but uh, another amazing movie, you know, I'm just doing suggestions of movies. But uh, I think uh, people should watch uh, Francis Ha as well, wonderful movie, and this is uh, my inspiration in how to, uh, let's say, visualize stories that are not so much out of the ordinary. They are uh, slice of life kind of pieces that are narrated in a way that is just so uh, close to my heart. And I feel it like it's uh, touching me every time I uh, see movies like that. Um, what else? Well, the Cartoon Saloon movies, for sure, which was for me the twist from, I would say, my childhood animation inspirations to my later, like, adult years. Um, when I watched uh, The Secret of Chaos, I just had yes. a, <laughs> I just had a, you know, it was an, a, an, how is it called, an aha moment. It was one of those things that you say, oh, okay, so they, they're still doing things like that. I, I mean, I had no connection with uh, the animation world for a while, but going from the old Disney movies to this uh, modern um, kind of animate, uh, modern animated uh, features. And uh, then I think that you can see it in my work as well, uh, Steven Universe uh, and probably my favorite series that I've watched lately is Star vs. the Forces of Evil. <laughs> Wonderful shows. Um, but yeah, I would say that uh, lately I get more um, mental reference and more like uh, storytelling reference rather than visual reference because uh, I mean it in my job now I'm I'm not really looking for an, a stylist a stylistic uh, approach into something like okay of course you have to follow uh, the production's guidelines and you have to be consistent in that but uh, what matters to me the most right now is the storytelling and how to serve a story so I get lots from uh, from reading and unfortunately, another thing is traveling, which right now is not possible. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think I'm one of those people that, I mean, I absolutely admire the people that do this, don't get me wrong, that always uh, go around with a sketchbook and they're always uh, sketching and doing life drawing and stuff. But unfortunately, I'm not one of those people. I'm trying a lot to keep uh, a steady relationship with my sketchbook, but um, 
I'm struggling from time to time. So I like uh, going out and seeing things with my own eyes, and then maybe I can interpret them in my art. Um, so, and I would recommend that hopefully when the quarantines and the lockdowns are over, I think that right now, even right now, we can uh, travel under some, uh, <laughs> under some, how can I say, like the restrictions, maybe. Um, but if you see something that you like in a movie, for example, when I watched The Secret of Kells, I wanted to go to Dublin and see The Book of Kells with yes. my own eyes. Uh, so I did that and I think it was great. What else? I was watching, um, for example, I was watching a series that was filmed in Copenhagen. So one of the first things I did when going to Denmark was going to Copenhagen and see the bridge uh, that connects Denmark with Sweden. Um, the architecture of uh, Barcelona, for example, is something that uh, really inspired me so i'm trying to like balance this habit of mine of uh, not drawing that much with having my eyes open and uh, seeing the world around me so i think that this is probably my number one inspiration at the moment i would say no wow um i, I am feeling better right now because i'm not uh, a sketchbook person as well mm -hmm. and i used to feel guilty but um, now I think there are many artists that don't, I don't know, they don't mm, do daily drawing. They mm. just observe much, as you said. Right. And it's still useful. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying, of course, I would say that, uh, don't listen to my advice. No, I'm not saying that. I would say that, uh, of course, uh, if you can maintain a healthy uh, balance of sketching daily, for example, because, I mean, as I said, you need, now I'm working, so I'm doing that every single day. But for people yes. who are uh in the process of developing the work if you maintain a steady habit and you just keep on doing that then it becomes much easier uh and that is also how you become faster in drawing storyboards but that's another <laughs> question i suppose um, yeah yeah i'm going to ask you right now this one yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so Go how for. do you practice Go for um it. how do you practice um uh, gestures storytelling maybe you have some exercises mm -hmm. that we, we can share with the students oh sure uh I would say the exercises that uh, we did for ID Academy, it's uh, I just keep on redoing them. So, well, you got to understand anatomy and first of all, so you need to understand the basic elements of design in order to start maybe your career. Uh, so gesture drawing from model, really important. You don't need to go to a place that has live model. You can do that online as well. Uh, there are websites that have uh, lots of poses that you can copy. Um, so it, apart from when when you are when you are able to work on your sketchbook, and I I will say that you should maybe do that practice at least uh, I don't know for 15 minutes a day. It's not that big of a deal. You can practice. You can say that oh today I'm gonna just draw three poses, but do that and so you learn. You are becoming a little bit better than what you were yesterday. So I think that's uh, important for me. And then understanding character design, all the compositional elements, understanding the theory of cinema, how cameras work. So this is all the technical stuff. So then I will move on to uh, what I'm doing right now, to the, all the, the exercises and stuff that I can recommend. Um, so study, I would say, study cinema. Uh, if you... If you want, you can look for films. This is a great advice that I got once from a teacher. I unfortunately don't remember who it was. Um, to study pre-CGI movies. So watch, you can watch movies before effects were applied. So you can understand how things were done without, uh, in an economic way, you know, without relying on visual effects, solving your questions. People in the, I don't know, in the 50s had to rely on uh, cheap ways of or shooting a scene. So if you watch, let's say, for example, uh, Buster Keaton comedies, Charlie Chaplin, um, these are, and try to understand how these scenes were filmed, because it's important in storyboarding, lots of the times, except if you're, I suppose, working for a production with budget is unlimited, but I don't know if that is a scenario, real life scenario, because most of the times you have limitations. So um, there is a, like keep it simple is one of those things that you will keep listening. You have to keep it simple. You have to be economic. You do, sometimes you will be even asked to reuse shots and backgrounds. So understanding how movies were done in the simplest form uh, is 
pretty important to me and it has taught me lots of things. Uh, another thing that we do uh, is called, I don't know if people call it like that, I call it reverse storyboarding, I think. People in Denmark used to call it like that and it's basically watching a movie, stopping in frames and try to draw them. So instead of, instead of storyboarding the scene, you're watching at the final thing and you're drawing it really fast, just take, I don't know, even 10 seconds, just do shapes, be rough, super rough, it doesn't matter. Um, of course you have to do that, that is also another thing that you, that you have to practice because in storyboarding, I mean, you can see now that my drawings are not, uh, let's say, perfect, like the, the, the lines are rough, the very simple shapes, just one color or whatever, um, so you have to, first of all, don't be so emotionally attached with your art. Um, sometimes I try to do this thing, which I'm not a big fan of because I love my art sometimes. Sometimes I just throw it away, but uh, that's for a different reason that you draw something, do a storyboard and then just scrap it, throw it away. Uh, I say that this is maybe a bit like torture for some people, but uh, if it gets you detached from your art, well, maybe it's something that you can consider doing. Um, well, what else for exercises? Let's see in something more uh, technical. I, w I would say that it's, ve it's very important basically to study cinema and you don't need to study animation for it. Um, and uh, study live action movies and get your, ah, and also very important is to get your inspiration from, not inspiration, your reference uh, from real life. So if you want to draw, for example, expressions and acting, um, like let's say an example of uh, I wouldn't search, I wouldn't do a Google search that says like angry man yelling if I wanted to say, if I wanted to draw that expression. Uh, I would probably search for something that comes from real life, like an angry football coach yelling at its, at his players. Um, so instead of copying a stock photo, you're looking into a real life scenario and that is really important. Um, what else? Maybe I can look at my notes. <laughs> Let me see. I had some things written down, but now I think I've said most of them. Um, ah, okay. Now there is this uh, really nice exercise that is. Uh, I think it's. I'm glad to see that it's becoming kind of a trend right now, especially for storyboard artists. I mean, the trend for storyboard artists is not really trendy out there, but uh, I'm gonna share it. It's called uh, next five or next twenty shots. And uh, what ha I think there is also a hashtag, so if you search Instagram, you're probably going to find it. And so you're basically starting with uh, someone else's drawings or maybe a photo of a scene and you're drawing the next five scenes, the next oh. five shots, the way that you uh, imagine the story is going to play out. Um, not in the same uh, shot, you can use different angles, different cameras. Um, and I think this is a really, really nice exercises. exercise. There are lots of wonderful artists that have done it. So you, if you search for next five, next 20 storyboarding, you're going to find lots of examples, um, plus photos of uh, photos, shots that have already been done. So then you can kind of compare your work to what uh, master storyboarders have done and learn from them. Uh, that's also another great exercise. Mm. I believe that's that. I mean, if uh, I'm, there are also the classic drawing. For me, it's always good to get out of my, uh, let's say, comfort zone. So if I want to do something, uh, instead of storyboarding, I would try to draw, to copy, let's say, a portrait um, using digital painting, something that I learned uh, in the in Idea Academy. Because um, as I said, storyboarding is as part of visual visual development. Uh, it's one of those uh, elements that um, one of one of those fields that it just combines uh, and it takes stuff from other fields of visual development. So if you practice, even if you practice backgrounds, compositions, and stuff, you're gonna find this thing in the storyboarding. So whatever uh, you do will be will be fine. <laughs> No, this is great. And I didn't know about this next five or next 20. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm honest, I will look into it. Now yeah. I'm really curious. Yeah, no, it's a really nice exercise. It helped me a lot. And oh, so I wanted to ask, um, how is your schedule, schedule right now? Do you have time for um, your personal work? Maybe you're working on something. You said you have this project that you're keeping up. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm not keeping it a secret, before, <laughs> but uh, I am uh, I am developing it as time goes by. I also have I I really like trying to you know find a, let's say an idea, write it down, write a small script about it, and try to develop a story. Um, I wouldn't say that I'm one of those people that I I mean concept art was maybe never a thing for me, so I'm not. Uh, I can't just uh, do one painting. I want to learn more about what happens next. Um, so when I have an idea, I mostly write it down. I had a nice idea, I would say, for about for a um, small series that of storyboards that I'm developing. It will be uh, when I update my portfolio, it will be there. So I can I I think we can share a link of my portfolio. We will at the end of the presentation. Yes. You're gonna see it there um, sometime in the near future. And uh, yeah, I think I definitely have time for developing uh, my own work because that's the perk of working in a studio and not as a freelancer because that you have uh, it's something that works for me. I mean, it's a perk for me. It's not uh, that it works the same way for other people. For me, when I have my, let's say, eight hour shift and I work from uh, 11 to 7, 11 to 730, uh, it's Greece time. It's not uh, in, in Ireland, it's nine to five, but. <laughs> we are two hours ahead. Um, so then I have the rest of the day, and I can not, I, I can not think about my work. So uh, I just, it's it's great for me to just leave uh, work at that time and then uh, jump into my fun playing uh, com comfort zone, whatever you want to call it, uh, personal project time. Uh, so there is time. There is. Uh, I would say that at the moment still there is the passion for it so lots of things in personal as personal projects are coming up and you should keep your eye on the website <laughs> yeah of course guys i'm going to share with you all the links to become stalkers yeah, of yeah, costis yeah. <laughs> so just please do because i'm sure we'll see lots of fun stuff of course so some technical questions for students or maybe just graduated students that want to apply for a storyboard position, storyboard revisionist or storyboard artist. Okay. Um, how many panels would you say uh, are needed? I know it's really personal, mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah, uh, no. how, how many different kinds of stories mm -hmm. do you need to, to have in your portfolio? Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, I, I, under, I totally understand the question. This is uh, along with uh, how much you should charge for its panel. It's uh, one of those questions that you yeah. always have in your mind. I'm, I'm going to talk about that later if there is actually a question about it. Um, but uh, it's not really an amount of panels for sure uh, that you need to have in order to find a job. I mean, as I said, I got a job with much, much less than what I have in my portfolio right now. Um, but of course, not every studio is asking, wants to see the same thing. Uh, so I would say instead of just, maybe my suggestion would be if you're having a hard time um, creating lots, making an, a big amount of work, uh, focus on having different projects, uh, even if they are short ones, like let's say two pages of nine panels each. Um, Maybe I would say that instead of having one project with 16 pages of 15 panels uh, for its page, I would say it's better to have like four or five different projects uh, that you develop maybe different styles. Let's say one is comedy, the other one is uh, more dramatic, there is a horror one. Um, so you can develop, you can explore different uh, narration styles. And I think the important thing, especially for a storyboard revision, is because as I said, you're not uh, you're working on someone else's work, so uh, the studios want to see that you are flexible, uh, that you can jump into the production right now and start working immediately on someone else's work, as I said, and you have to respect the style that this artist has already done, uh, has already worked on, because when the client or when the director sees it, you can't have uh, different styles appearing in the animatic one panel after the other. Um, so I would say try to be versatile and try to work three or four at least maybe i mean i don't i don't like putting on these rules but uh, i would say that if i saw a portfolio with uh four projects five projects for me it would be great to see that an artist has uh developed five different styles of storyboarding five different styles of storytelling 
and it doesn't even have to be that long. I mean, you can when you're going to work on a when you're gonna be assigned basically to do a test in order to get a job. Uh, most of the times, if you're asked to do an animatic, uh, you would be asked to do something more or less around 40 seconds to a minute maximum. Uh, maybe a minute is way too much. Actually, I've never asked to do that such a thing. So think about if you think about it, one 40 seconds of storyboarding is not. Uh, that much. I mean, you can you can have uh, five 40 second one minute projects or maybe three and a big one. I, as I said, I don't like putting on these rules, but uh, I would say in. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the bottom line is instead of going for a quantity of panels, go for quantity of uh, projects. OK, yes, yeah, so show maybe uh, as many, I don't know, um, genres as possible. Yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, and uh, if you can also implement, like show it that uh, they are actually for different animation styles, because um, people know that there's like there are 2D productions, as I said, right now I'm working for a studio that uh, is working mainly on 3D. And uh, before that, I had very, very little experience working as 3D artist and uh, as a 3D storyboard artist. Um, so try maybe <clears throat> to imagine how the final product would be if it's going to be hand drawn storyboarded if it's going to be a live action uh, if it's going to be 3d animated rigged or whatever um, try to show that with your with your work so if for example you want to achieve you want to work for a 3d um, animation studio they will want to see different camera movements and uh, 3d environments in your storyboarding so you can also try apart from the genres to use also different uh, to have in mind different animation styles so it happens to you now, uh, working maybe in 3D series, to to use some 3D backgrounds, uh, maybe screenshots of backgrounds, and yeah, yeah, use yeah, them yeah. in your work. Mm -hmm. Right, 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 right. Um, and I mean, in uh, we also sometimes need to, if we have a camera movement, we need to get uh, that clean with uh, taking the screenshots from different angles of the set um, or drawing it which uh, I would say that's because storyboarding is such a, a practical uh, thing. I mean, you're you're drawing in order to cut production time uh, as, as much as you can, like you want to be fast. So instead of uh, drawing um, a, a 3D set from different angles, we're just taking screenshots at the moment. Um, it's not it's not a shame. I mean, people are doing <laughs> well, no, this makes a lot. Whatever, of yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever you can do. Uh, I mean, not whatever. I would say that as as long as you're learning from it and it's a, a nice experience for you, whatever you can do to uh, cut down your time to minimum, uh, just do it and don't feel like you're cheating or something. It's I, I, for me, there's no cheating in that. I, I, of course, don't use someone else's art. That that I think goes without saying. No, no, but 3D can be really useful also for designers. I see many people also building backgrounds. Um, yeah, and then completing maybe with painting over the 3D model. Exactly. And I I really wanted to share the animatics you have on, on your website. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I am not sure uh, about the quality since we are doing this call, but Guys, you can find them later um, on Costi's website if you want to see them again. Okay. And I'd also love to leave some space for questions uh, oh, sure. from everybody. Just type them in the chat, then uh, we will go through them. And I just want to share the website right now. Just yeah. give me a second. <laughs> Let's see if I, I, I can do this without blowing up the call. <laughs> Let's Ah, uh, let's see. Just tell me if you see that. Oh, yeah. Perfect. I'm just going to play this one. Mm -hmm. I hope the sound doesn't, uh, there's also audio. Mm, I, I don't know if this Never will mind. come through. You can, you can watch it.
This is so great. I, I don't know about you, but now I want to watch the entire series. That's nice. That's what I want to hear. Did you? Are you all watching this uh, gray square on the right side of the? Oh, this one maybe. Yeah, I don't know how to okay. take this okay. off. Uh, maybe I can. Yes, there, I think I was, the. I was wondering if that was on the on the animatic or not. <laughs> no, no, no. But yeah. I don't want. Okay, so no, sorry. This one. But yeah. you, you, you can't hear the music, right? I, no, no. I don't know. Uh, can you hear it from your computer? I think I can. I okay. can try to maybe do this. I think. I don't know. I, I believe that Skype. I mean, I've tried a lot of times to. <laughs> can you hear me right now? Yeah. Okay, so maybe now you can also hear the music if I play okay. it. I'm not sure about the quality, guys, but let's try. This is so great. You see, th this was much shorter than the first one. For example, this, because <clears throat> this one was for a, uh, a test uh, that I did um, for an animation, for a storyboard introduction. And, uh, but I can share now because it's my characters and uh, my scripting, let's say. Um, so this is, I would say, a typical example of what a storyboarding uh, test would look like. Uh, I mean, this time, and uh, I don't know how many pages it is, but you can see that it's not about the pages because these uh, three out of the three panels are pretty similar. I mean, you're just changing the the bullets and the shots whenever they're fired. So if you can use some panels again and again and again, and that doesn't uh, make it that hard to make this amount of uh, uh, storyboard for one test and for your portfolio as well. I would say if I if I saw if I looked at the portfolio and it had three or four uh, per projects like that, I would con personally I would consider it an enough amount of uh, board for one portfolio. This totally answers my question. Okay. <laughs> so this was also from your time at the animation workshop, right? right? Right. As I as I say, I mean, this is uh, important to say that all rights reserved <laughs> reserved by Cartoon Saloon. This is a redesign. Uh, I didn't actually work uh, for the breadwinner, but <laughs> because yeah, the characters from the movie. I, I yeah, 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 yeah. I was uh, I did a, um, one of our teachers in Cartoon Saloon was Giovanna Ferrari, who worked uh, in uh, in the production of the film. So she let us use the characters and reimagine the scene from the script. Uh, I mean, I had watched The Breadwinner, but she advised us, like, no, don't watch it uh, before this exercise, don't cheat. Uh, try to read the script of the film and uh, see how you would uh, reimagine the scene. So we can watch it, and people, I mean, whoever remembers how The Breadwinner is, uh, this is not how the scene is actually in the movie. Um, so th this is another cool exercise, like reading uh, a script, trying to make, do your own take on it, and... Um, see how close you are from the film and see, of course, I mean, Cartoon Saloon, I would say, got it right. <laughs> Not saying that I got it, I got it wrong or whatever, but I'm, I'm learning afterwards by looking at the final product and seeing uh, how much I can improve on it. So we can, we can watch that as well, I guess. Yes. Anyway, there are so many ways to tell a story, so Absolutely. it's not the perfect one. Mm -hmm. Let's watch it. But also, guys, I, guys, I recommend to uh, watch these ones later because I think they can lag sometimes with Skype. Okay. Yeah, I, I actually noticed that it's moving a little bit slower, maybe. Exactly, yeah. Uh, or I need to improve my timing on the animatics. No, no, <laughs> so no. It's one of those things. I don't think it's you. <laughs> I think it's my connection, but okay. anyway. You can still see this one to move this.
Wow, I have so much many no, go, right no, now. Go vote for the winner now and we can compare who did it better. No, <laughs> yes, we can also watch that. <laughs> But yeah, no, I I got all, all these feelings now. I remember the movie. Mm, it's right. amazing, beautiful, but also can be yeah. really sad. Right. And let's also watch this one. I love this one. <laughs> yeah, I really like this one. <laughs> I thought that I was laughing with my own work and I found it weird. <laughs> I mean, some, some nice questions in the chat. So they are very to the point. Uh -huh, you're already looking there. Yes, and yes. we will just watch this one. I guess it's the last one. Oh, and, right. and then move on to the questions. But yeah, it's great. It's really hard to make people laugh. I. I learned this yeah. at right. some point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's so, not just about what you, I mean, as I'm saying, like I, I get so much from Edgar Wright, I always sing praises about this uh, director. Um, but it's not just about what you say, it's mostly about how, what you show and how you show it. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, apart from the typical like show, don't tell, it's it's really about that. I mean, with, just with a simple composition, you can make someone laugh and that's really, really nice to see. And I'm trying to do it.
this one also was amazing. I think this is one that you have to watch uh, with the, with the audio on because it makes them pretty epic. <laughs> Music yeah, choice. <laughs> yeah. Not My too bad, but <laughs> but I think they fit. Um, yeah. Okay, so I will just need to put this on. Sure. Back on. Hope you hear me. Yep. So we can switch back to your links to your socials. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now you see. Just follow Costis, please, guys. We 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 need to see everything that that comes up on his website. I I do have to say though, I mean that I'm not. Uh, I mean Instagram is a great way to reach out to me, although I'm not uh, really posting so much. So if you want to look at my work, you should uh, check on my website. Because um, okay, first of all, I mean you can't upload this kind of animatics onto <laughs> Instagram, and um, I mean maybe this is kind of also an advice for people. Like I feel that Instagram for me is. Uh, it's becoming a lot of pressure to post there and it's just I don't know sometimes it, I feel like it takes the fun out of creating so uh, I'm you can contact me there but as I said my work is on my website <laughs> that's it I'll be sure to leave all the links for yeah, for perfect. everyone later okay so now we can go to the questions but first of all as Mark said also, I love the reverse mermaids. <laughs> yeah, Such a thank genius. You. <laughs> thank you. I mean, it's it's not my idea create originally, but I, I saw it somewhere. Um, but uh, I really, really love this kind of uh, weird twists when, wherever you can put them. I mean, I'm I'm trying to do like place uh, Easter eggs and the kind of secret stuff yes. for me. This for me to enjoy sometimes in my in my work, and that is. Like I, it, it just makes it fun again because I mean people who are in this field they are doing it because they love it and that's also what I want to think about myself. No, you I, know it's great yeah. that they are unexpected and yeah, yeah they exactly, just... exactly. I mean this this is this is what I love doing and uh, it's just sometimes you know I'm working and uh, <laughs> I'm I'm laughing on my own because I I just thought of something I'm not gonna do it because it's studios work but I was ah this would this would be great to be here. But, you know, reverse uh, mermaid in a children's animated series, maybe not. <laughs> so this is great. Storyboard art may it might be the like the only thing that you do and you laugh while working because I think when you're maybe designing, then you're crying all the time. No, I'm joking. Oh no, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, the, if if there's crying involved, they would say that crying in that sense is involved in all and in all kinds of creation. <laughs> Uh, okay, I mean, we are sometimes we're being harsh with ourselves, right? We are the harshest judge of our own work, but uh, it's all right. Try to have fun. That's that's the thing. Like, laugh with your own, even even with your own mistakes. Like sometimes I make something and I'm like, oh my god, what, what did I do? And I just start, I just I just break, you know. I just laugh with it. It's a it's a great way to cope for me. Yeah, of course. This is also a great suggestion. I will follow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Push yourself to love. No, I'm not. <laughs> We're gonna end up with uh, mental issues, and that's not healthy. <laughs> no, maybe not. Okay, so let's go to William's um, question. Yeah. Uh, so he says, uh, "I got a question related to the quantity of frames. Mm -hmm. I love how fluid it feels, but it makes me wonder. Storyboards get so detailed and specific after the approbation of a previous less specific storyboard." Like after a pre-story bird. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is this is the one that I. I mean, the other ones are great questions too. But this is the one that I saw, and I, I felt like it's something that I said in the beginning about the storyboarding process, and that we need to uh, have that also in mind how it's done. Like um, a typical storyboarding structure, let's say. I mean, when you're working as a freelancer, it's more clear to understand how that happens. Is that for? Uh, I will say that for an episode of um, eleven minutes. Because when the episode is 22 minutes long, um, you're probably going to be working with another artist on the same episode. So you probably will have to do in um, a month to five weeks, 11 minutes of uh, of animation uh, into storyboarding. And how that happens is, I mean, th this is a typical, right? If uh, 
you can get shorter terms like that. I have been working. I, I have worked in uh, uh, much more strict productions that you had to do that in like three weeks or whatever. Um, but that's up to you to decide if you can or if you are not able to do it. Uh, I would say for me, if I had to assign something to someone, I would say five weeks for, for 11 minutes. It's kind of makes sense. Um, and what happens in that is that you're starting with, uh, let's say, let's divide it in five weeks. Okay, first week would be uh, to rough it out, just find uh, the thing that we call the master shots, which is basically, let's say that you have um, a whole scene, like a conversation happening in a room, and you want to find the one shot to which you're going to be returning to, uh, whenever you like, you cut to a close up. Um, you cut to another close-up, you cut to a detail, you do a mid-shot or whatever, and then you return uh, to this thing that we call the master shot. Uh, you can see that if you start, uh, if you notice uh, in movies and in animation, you will see that they keep returning to that uh, one thing. Uh, so first week would be to rough it out, maybe find, find your master shots, um, make a super, super rough uh, storyboard, probably not uh, with just like no in betweens, nothing. Just set your scenes, um, set your uh, your shots, everything that you want to show in the in the end. Um, and uh, after that, you're gonna have a meeting with your team, with your department, uh, probably uh, the storyboard director, uh, the story director, and the director of the of the show, um, in which they're gonna give you notes. You're gonna have to revise that, and while revising, you're basically uh, cleaning a little bit. Oh, no, actually, no. Second week is nothing to do with cleaning. Second week is you're going to change what they gave you, um, change your storyboard with based on what they gave you, what notes they gave you, and um, start developing, let's say, these scenes. Uh, so when you have one shot for one scene, uh, you will add a couple of more. Um, you will start exploring uh, how acting is going to happen. Uh, but I would say still, probably during second week, uh, there's not going to be lots of in betweening happening. Like the storyboard is not going to be so clean and detailed as like what you saw in the in the animatic. Which I, I have to say that now, I mean, looking at my work after quite a long time, um, it's not really detailed. Um, it's, it could be more. Uh, there could be more in betweens added. Mm -hmm. Then again, second week, another meeting. You're going to have notes on that because even if the director told you how things uh, will be played out when you lay it on the storyboard, it might not work. Um, so you will have more notes, more feedback coming from your uh, from the production team, and you'll have to change again some sorts, uh, make the necessary revisions. Then it's probably where of during the second week, you're starting to block spaces, you're starting to place your characters, um, you're staging it, you're putting um, Grids for backgrounds, not not drawing so much, but like showing the perspective. Oh, basically, the perspective is something that you always need to uh, have in mind. Uh, but during the third week is when it starts taking shape and it, it starts becoming uh, much more clean. What you want, what the final product would be. Um, so then, basically, you have two weeks, I would say, in in a good scenario, um, to add in betweens, clean it up, make all the last uh, revisions on it. And then have your final meeting after week number week five probably, where it's going to be approved, and then it's going to go to the revision. Um, so you'll have plenty of time to to do that. It starts from something that is super rough. Uh, probably it's going to be looking like thumbnails, um, and then it keeps uh, growing, turning into the final product. Okay, perfect. I hope I explained it clearly. I don't know. No, yeah, 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 of course. I feel I'm learning so much today. Sure. So, yeah, there is, and now I'm, I'm looking at the question, there is a pre storyboard. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so, Wuti, uh, and guys, I'm sorry if I mess up your names. I'm so sorry. Um, he says, Hi, I'm wondering how fast do you need to work as a professional storyboard artist? Like, how many pages of script or how many panels need to be covered every day? Nice. Uh, so, this is really interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. Um, this is kind of a, not not really a rule, but uh, they say in animation that one minute of animation is one page of script. This doesn't doesn't work most of the times, but it's kind of a way to imagine. So I would say that uh, uh, an eleven page episode would probably be eleven pages, twelve pages of script. 
uh, more or less. I mean, maybe up to 15 if uh, people use large gaps, I don't know. Um, so that should be, I, as I said, that you should do it in a week, basically. But I, did, I said like the process of how this is going to be. So maybe during one week you have to cover the whole script. Um, you have to do all 11 to 12 pages of it, um, but not in by any means in the final uh, looks of the storyboard. Um, now I, I don't know because in, in terms of panels, um, as a revisionist, I can I can tell you how many how many panels you're going to be revising every day, more or less. Uh, but as a storyboard artist, I think it really depends because uh, sometimes you can just use one shot uh, and just describe everything that you want to say. Um, so if there is a conversation, two people are acting in a, in a way that's going to be more shot. Uh, averagely, I, I'm, I'm going as a revisionist, you're going to be, and that, that might be scary, but uh, still, <laughs> get ready. Um, you're going to be revising averagely uh, around 150, oh no, not 150, sorry, 100 to 150 panels a day, uh, 150 in a busy day. Uh, it can go down to 50, but that's not going to happen very often. So around around 100 panels is pretty average. Um, but consider that this is not, uh, like some panels don't need maybe any changes at all. Maybe you need to like lift one eyebrow in one, uh, maybe you need to change a little bit the background. Maybe there are some small changes. Sometimes you have to redraw the whole scene, but uh, in this, in case you're doing that, it's not going to be 150 panels. You're going to be doing, let's say, 50 in one day. Um, so I think in productions like the one that I'm working right now, when there's understanding among uh, people and people know the process um, of how this thing is done, they can understand what is humanly possible and what isn't. Um, so they wouldn't ask you to redraw 150 panels in a day. Uh, you think that's pretty much impossible to do. Um, so as a, as a storyboard, art, I mean, I don't I don't want to put a number on it because maybe other storyboard artists are going to be criticizing me. Um, and, and, and it also depends on what you're on how you're working, right? Because you might be working as a freelancer or you might be working in a studio. Um, so if you, for me personally, uh, my, when I was working as a freelancer, I found it really hard to manage my time. And uh, so I ended up maybe drawing, I don't know, 200 panels in a day because I had my deadline the, the next day, the next morning, and I had to just finish the whole thing. This is not good. Don't do it. Um, but I think it depends. It depends how many time, how much, uh, if you're working in a nine to five job in a studio, um, which uh, it's it's going to be probably much more easy for me at least, right, to balance this thing and to figure out uh, how much that, how much work needs to be done within this time limit. Uh, so I'm I'm really sorry that I can't give an answer to how many panels uh, you would draw as a storyboard artist, but um, I think uh, I I hope I gave you kind of a a clear view on how it happens, uh, how the process is going to be. So. Yeah. No, I really think you you gave an idea mm -hmm. of yeah of what happens, and for sure it's a fast-paced environment. Thing, we... thing is, it, it's quite a lot if you look at the final pro uh, the final result. So like you can you can say that uh, I mean, eleven minutes of animation is like uh, I don't know six hundred five hundred six hundred more even uh, panels of storyboard. Um, so that can be pretty scary in the end, um, but it, it just happens the way that I said it, it, it happens like that. So you will start with like the first week you might draw 10 panels and that is that maybe it's harder to draw 10 panels in a week than drawing 60 panels in a day. Because when you have the, the, the director's notes and everything laid in front of you, then it's much easier to just go for it and uh, finish lots of panels with, with one go. Um, but you will you will hear that, for example, for us now in the revisionist department, uh, when you want to draw a new scene, it shouldn't take you more than like a very very hard shot wouldn't take you more than twenty to thirty minutes for one panel. It shouldn't like for the the hardest thing that you can imagine doing. So we have panels that should be done with like seconds. 
And I know, I know it sounds scary, but I was, uh, I was scared myself. And uh, I'll tell you that if you start working on it without being afraid that uh, you're going to mess it up or whatever, because it's something that uh, artists feel all the time. They think that uh, we are not uh, able to do what we are asked for. And I mean, you need to remember that these people chose you for that. They are the ones making the choice. Um, so they, they trust you for that. And if they are hiring you, you can actually do it. They're not gonna, they shouldn't ask you to do something that is human, humanly impossible. Um, so while you're working and while you're improving your experience in the field, you're gonna be improving also speed-wise. It's gonna be much more comfortable there. Okay, now that you've said this, I want to add a question, um, which is, I don't know, uh, in Italian, we call this like the fear of the white page when mm -hmm. you're starting something new. So sure. how do you overcome this when you start working on maybe a, a new episode? Yeah. If you have some tricks. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it, it's this thing that uh, is this uh, word that the artists are, are afraid to say is the art. Yes. Yes. Um, but uh, I say that, I, I mean, first of all, we've got to understand, and I think that by talking to other people, you've got to understand that, I mean, if there is a person that hasn't experienced art block, I do want to meet them, uh, for, for sure. I do want to meet them and uh, they share like their experience with me and how, how they're managing. Um, but uh, it's something that it happens. And uh, apart from us knowing it, also our, super, our supervisors know it, our directors know it, uh, people who have been in this position, I mean, I don't assume that someone just became an art director one day. Uh, everyone has gone through um, this process of uh, blocking and not being able to move forward. And uh, for, I'm saying this because it's it's really important to understand that it's happening, like it's normal. And uh, there is, I believe there is no way of uh, saying that, like avoiding it. Maybe it will happen in a, in a time where you are okay with it. Maybe it will happen in a day when you really need to work and you can't um, do that. Um, so just understanding the process of dealing with it uh, is much help, much more helpful than saying, no, 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 I don't want to have an art block right now. Just uh, pushing yourself into doing something while your body and mind definitely can't. Um, so that's the first step. Then. Clearly, I mean, what you want to do is maybe, I mean, what I do, I'm not, I'm not going to say what, what you should or shouldn't do. Uh, I would say what I do is that I, when I realize that I'm not uh, able to like focus or do some or work at the moment, I just drop it. I mean, it's easier for me. It's better to say like, I'm not going to work for an hour or two. I'm going to go out, clear my mind instead of just looking at my computer screen and screen and just freaking out about this. Um, so what I would recommend is that when you're feeling like that, do something that changes your mood, you know, go out for a walk, uh, talk to a friend. First of all, and most importantly, is like discuss. I mean, as much as we should be discussing like our mental uh, health issues, because I know that the quarantine is not um, a good timing for people, especially artists who sometimes we are I know that lots of people in this community have like insecurities and we are maybe sometimes shy people and introverts. It's it's OK and people should be discussing these things. Um, so if when you're having an art block, like talk with someone, ask for someone who um, you respect maybe and will if they say their, their own experience, this um, will be easier for you to get a hold of. Uh, I, th I remember like the last time that I felt really, really bad about that was um, when I got the job that I had before uh, joining Brown Bag, um, that for a week I really just I couldn't I couldn't do anything. I was feeling like I uh, I'm not able to do it. I was thinking that this is a really high uh, position for me and I'm not uh, able to. Uh, first of all, this is called I I, f I found out that time and mo maybe lots of people know it and I wasn't aware. It's called the imposter syndrome. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know the term, but I knew what it means. Um, and I, I think I said it before, it's like when you are feeling that uh, you are not able to do this thing that you are asked and uh, that you are not worthy or something like that. Uh, I, as I said, it's like, first of all, you shouldn't be getting so much uh, pressure on yourself, right? It's the, it's the, OK, of course, you want to be good because you want the production to be uh, to move forward. That's super healthy, super nice. But you got to remember that you went through a process, right? You got hired for this position. Um, so 
don't feel like you're cheating on someone. They they are the ones who chose you. And to be honest, I mean, it's okay. It, it sometimes it's not really good. It's not nice. It sucks to lose a job, um, but it might be what you need at the moment to just move forward. Um, so if you just think that you can't do it, do your best and let others decide if you can or cannot do it. Because as I said before, I mean, we, we are probably the harshest uh, judges of our own <laughs> of our own work. So uh, for real, like let let the director decide if that works or if it doesn't uh, or someone else. Or they are the creative director, your supervisor, ask for help. More, m really, really important if you're working at a production and you're not feeling OK one day, just say to your colleagues, uh, from my experience, and I said that, that people in the animation industry are really respective and they know what you're going through, so they're going to understand. They're going to say, like, OK, maybe, like, Costis, you can take the day off. Um, you don't need to work today. We'll cover for you. Um, I I would do the same thing, and I'm assuming that people uh, would understand that when you're a creative, you need to have, like, a good day. If you wake up and you're, you're feeling terrible you're you're not gonna make a beautiful art i mean it's um i don't know it's it's natural for you to like not being able to produce nice things um so yeah i mean when you're looking at the computer screen and you can't do something about it i would say do something else uh do something for fun move out of this and go to your happy place go to your comfort zone it doesn't even have to be art related you know just do something like play your musical instrument, uh, read a book, inspire yourself somehow. And you can also see it as a time um, of, let's say, thinking in a way of, OK, this thing is, is here, it's now. Uh, I can't like magically snap out of it. So I can prepare myself to be better when I snap out of it. So you can read, you can educate yourself, you can watch some pre-CGI <laughs> cinematography as I recommended before. Um, and yeah, this, for me, the most important thing is to just understand that this is normal. It happens to everyone. We're going to deal with it all together. <laughs> this was beautiful. I'm going to replay this part over and over again <laughs> in the next I'm weeks, glad. for sure. <laughs> I'm glad. Yeah, yeah no, it's, uh, it, it, it's typical. I mean, who hasn't? I don't know. <laughs> Find me that one person that hasn't uh, had art block ever in their lives. Probably I, not human. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe the the software. Even the softwares probably have bad days. I mean, they're crashing all the time. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> and that's all right. And yeah, and I see that. I see the question about the software that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's my uh, brain towards that question. I of know. course. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I've talked with uh, Eleutheria lots of times about the software that I'm using, and she knows. <laughs> Just um, let, let's share with us your love for for your software. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love. I'm in love with Storyboard Pro. I, I mean, if if Toon Boom is listening to this, maybe they can <laughs> they can endorse me. <laughs> um, no, no, no. I mean, I wouldn't uh, say to someone that you must use Storyboard Pro or something. Because um, I see it in my work right now that uh, there are artists who even draw pen and paper. <laughs> you, don't, you don't need to use a specific software. There will be studios maybe um, that will ask you to know some of those software, but you just need to know it. You don't need to use it. You can work on Photoshop. You can just whatever suits you. I would say, though, that Storyboard Pro is, uh, is one of those software that can do anything. Like, really, for me, it has got... Uh, uh, my drawing time, my storyboarding time into half uh, in comparison to Photoshop that I was using before. Um, it's always a software that is super easy to learn. It's, uh, I mean, if you go to Toon Boom's website, you can find tutorials to how to use um, uh, Storyboard Pro from beginner to professional. I don't know. You can even, I think, I believe you can even get an, uh, like an accreditation of uh, Storyboard Pro knowledge or whatever. Um, and it's a software that um, lots, I'm not going to say all of the animation studios are using, but most of the animation studios are using, are working with Storyboard Pro right now. Um, so yeah, you can download a trial for now and uh, <laughs> start 
going into it. And uh, whatever question you have on Storybook Pro, if Toon Boom doesn't want you to know, you can ask me. <laughs> okay, nice. So yep. you, you never start with um, just traditional media when you work, maybe to get down your ideas really fast? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my process is, well, maybe now, that, actually, no. I mean, recently when I'm, I, when I went, like, when I'm 100% uh, in Storyboard Pro, uh, which is last year, maybe, maybe not even. Um, now I'm not even using paper. Um, I'm just going Storyboard Pro directly because it's, uh, you can just use a smaller canvas and you can just you know, do all your sketches then there. Um, but also, yeah, traditional media in, uh, for sketching, for me, I believe basically for sketching and for gesture drawing and stuff like that, it's it's very hard to replace paper. I don't know. Yeah. I, I can't I can't feel something like that different. So for laying out thumbnails, I would I would actually recommend paper. Maybe it's more useful than just it's faster basically than you logging into a software and stuff. Um, but the only problem is that when you want to show that uh, to someone, like if you're working in the production, um, it's for sure much faster to just have it in digital form uh, instead of scanning yes. then um, I mean you always have to have a scanner with you wherever you are now I can I can work from anywhere just moving my computer and <laughs> going everywhere I want um, you need to carry a scanner with you and a printer uh, and uh, sometimes you're gonna have this thing of the resolution not being good um, something is gonna be not clearly visible so as much as I want to say that uh, and, okay, I mean, it's, uh, you can't make so many mistakes on paper. In Storyboard Pro, you can do a lot uh, and correct them. But uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I, I would say that use pen and, pa pen and paper for your own fun. And uh, when it's about production, yeah, maybe learn Storyboard Pro. <laughs> I don't want to make people to just start learning Storyboard Pro, but it's really, really, it has been really helpful for me. And in that sense, I'm sharing it with everyone. Yeah, I, I, I think it's fast. I um, I don't really know how to use it, but I've seen uh, it being used by some professionals and it looks like really intuitive. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. know how to explain that, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, imagine that, I don't know, how, a lot of people that uh, come to IDEA, I know that uh, have uh, already animation, uh, some animation experience, as I said before. I don't have, I have zero animation experience. I haven't studied animation. Um, so Storyboard Pro is very similar to, I, I have used animation software, uh, software after uh, the school, but uh, I would say Storyboard Pro is very, very close to uh, animating software, TV Paint, Flash. I don't okay. Know. So it's easy to understand and it's, uh, for, in my opinion, much, uh, much better. Okay, so I think we are out of questions, but there are so many uh, thank you messages. <laughs> Thank you. No, no, it's been lovely. A lovely evening. For and sure. you blessed us with all your knowledge. I am so happy. I'm very happy. Very I happy. think everyone learned so much. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you for your time. It was precious, really. It, it was, I mean, I'm very happy to be part of this. And uh, as I said, I'm like uh, super excited to be part of the school. Uh, in any way that I can moving forward in my career. And I hope that uh, I, not that I persuaded people to follow the storyboarding career, but uh, that uh, remind everyone that it's there and uh, we are always in the lookout for new talents and whoever wants to like go for um, storyboarding, just don't hesitate contacting me or uh, don't uh, hesitate following that path. Because for me, it's really beautiful and I'm absolutely loving it. Okay, now get ready to like re receive yeah, lots yeah, of messages. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> please. I, mean, it, I, I know that it's um, it's some it's a field that is not so easy to understand what you have to show uh, for people to get you to work for them. So I understand the frustration that it creates, and it's it's not really clear even for me right now because people are sometimes asking for different things. Uh, like if you go uh, through a process of interviews and. Um, job seeking, you will see that uh, different studios, different productions uh, are asking, want to see different things. So, um, and I would recommend actually going through that process of being interviewed and uh, talking to 
bigger studios maybe, but you feel are out of your league. Because first of all, you never know when you're going to get hired to them, but also it just breaks uh, this um, insecurity and this anxiety of uh, the networking, which is something that sometimes happens. Okay, thank you. Thank you for this last tip. Yeah, 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 yeah. Too much. And get in touch. Get in touch with it. I mean, reach out to me and uh, to each other. Don't forget that we are like we are a community above all. Yes, we're trying so hard to build yeah, a network. Yeah. Uh, also with this pandemic and we will keep going on also with these meetings you are invited of course for yeah, the next absolutely. ones absolutely. also everyone you can find this on youtube after but be yeah just be sure to follow costis we have the links perfectly here and and just follow his next adventures I, I want to see the series now, oh, so it's, please, yeah, so, get to work. So, you, know, you never know. <laughs> you never know. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm gonna let you know when when I can talk about the series, and of course, when I can show you my work. When it's out, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be the one that's reaching out to everyone, spamming them with uh, yes, emails. please. Like, go watch this, go watch that. So you can reach out to me right now, and then expect to be spammed later. <laughs> This is perfect. It's all I'm, I am asking for. <laughs> yeah, so it's, a, it's a fair trade, fair trade. <laughs> this is great. So thank you, everybody, for, for being here. Uh, thank you for your questions and thank you, Costis, again for your time so much. Thank you so much for making this happen. Brilliant. So goodbye, guys. Have a nice evening. Thank you for your thank yous. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone.